to Unicorn Just Designs. I am super happy to have you here today. I can't wait to show you these wood DIY projects. So let's go ahead and hop right into this video. We are back with some two by fours. Yay, you guys loved these last time. Now I am taking Truffle by Waverly and I wanted to give this like a faux wood distress look without having to stain it or use baby wipes because these two by fours were a little rough. So that is what I'm doing here. I'm gonna cover the fronts and the sides, but I'm not going to do the back here. And I just wanted to mention, if you are watching this for the first time, this is treated two by fours. Usually you would not use treated wood when you are selling items. Um, I am just trying to use the scraps that we have in the garage without buying more. So you can use treated wood if you're doing something for outside projects, but it's not something that you would DIY and then like sell usually. Okay, just wanted to let you guys know that tidbit of information. All right, so now that that's done, I'm going to get my white chalk paint. I'm gonna have a chippy brush and we are going to apply the paint at a vertical angle. Um, I feel like when you apply it at this angle, it just gives it like the most perfect distressed wood look but you know you do you and we're going to do this on the front the back and the sides we're not going to do it on the top or the bottom since those will not be showing now i'm going to take some fabric these are all from dollar tree and i am going to cut some rectangular pieces out of course i did not measure these for you guys i'm sorry but maybe i could give you somewhat of an idea in the description box so i'm going to cut three pieces out we are gonna make three snowmen here, um, but I'm just gonna show you how to make one of them since it would kind of be a little repetitive. So I'm gonna cut three pieces of fabric out. They could be all the same. I chose to do three different patterns. Now I'm gonna take my two by four. I don't wanna see the raw hem, so I'm gonna kind of roll that up there, see the placement that I want for its beanie. I'm gonna put that face down. I'm gonna grab my hot glue gun and I am going to put a bead of glue back there and tack that down. Easy peasy, right? Or you guys can use like scarf material. Um, I wonder, yeah, there, there's so many possibilities for what you can do with the beanie. Okay, and then we're gonna get that other side, apply some more hot glue. We're going to turn this little guy around and then we are going to get some twine and we are going to tie off the top of its beanie. This was really hard doing, I don't know why. I was wanting it to like not cave in in the middle and kind of be like a little fluffy. So you could always actually stick maybe like um, tissue paper or something in there to help that. And then I'm just going to tie it in a bow right here. And like I said, the accessories and everything, you can totally add on to these snowmen and make them your own. Then on the top, I decided to cut little strands. What, what would we call these? Um, not tassels, fringe fringe is what I was cutting into these guys just to add a little bit more detail. Now we're going to go on the front of our snowmen and I'm going to cut some um, strands of fabric out. And then these are just fabric that I used for the other beanies so that it all coordinates. I just double knotted it. And again, I'm going to grab those scissors and I'm going to cut some fringe. I was on a fringe like kick for this video. Sorry if you could hear Hank howling in the background. Okay, now I'm gonna take my favorite rounded edge synthetic makeup brushes. These I just recycled from my makeup stash and I am going to paint some eyes on here. Now we are gonna do very simple features for these snowmen. We're not doing eyelashes, but you definitely can. Then I'm getting an angled brush and you guys, all you have to do is do a sideways triangle. That is it. If a sideways triangle is called something else, let me know in the comments, but a triangle sideways. Anybody could paint this on. This would be so much fun to do with your children as well. 
and then I'm going to create some buttons. You can also substitute this with actual buttons. Dollar Tree sells like a whole little thing of them, or you can do pom poms or some gems. So many options you can do for these little guys, but I did three of them, all different heights. You could do them all the same heights, and these would probably be great sellers in booths or craft shows. Um, they would also be just fun to gift somebody or if you made them in a larger version for like a porch. But I love the way that they turned out. I love that you could add so much character by the different accessories that you put on them. So I hope you guys enjoyed these two by fours because I love DIYing with them. This next one. All right, you guys, we got more of this fencing that I got um, for free off of Facebook. I cut them to about 14 inches long and then the main fencing post, I am just leaving its regular length. I'm gonna take Crimson by Waverly for the first one. And when I can leave some wood features unpainted, I will. So I decided to leave all of the edges in the raw wood and only paint the top of my arrows. So again, this one is crimson. Then for the second arrow, I tried silver lining by Waverly, but since I wanted all of my text to be in white, I decided against it and then went on top of it with nautical by folk art. And it was the most perfect blue. I love it. The third color I used is antique green. This is also by Folk Art. I got this on Plaid's website. So if there's colors you can't find in the store, definitely go check out Plaid's website for them. Now I am taking my stencils that I created. This SVG file is available for purchase on my website. And I am using Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl and transfer ease, uh, transfer paper, everything available in my Amazon store link in my description box. So we're gonna take these off. Now, this wood is very, very rough. So I'm gonna apply these to my wood pieces. I'm gonna rub down as much as I can on them and they actually, like the, the stencil vinyl stuck very well to this. However, I know it's not gonna go in between every single one of the little cracks in this wood. So we need to be careful that when we are stenciling on to our piece of wood, you are just going in up and down motions. You are not packing paint onto that brush. You just need a light amount. And like I said, up and down motions, okay? Like a stippling effect. That way you're not pushing that paint underneath that stencil and you won't have a bunch of bleeds. And let me tell you, they, these turned out so crisp. Look at this. That wood, wood, you guys, is rough, like super, super rough. And these came out so clean looking. I was thoroughly impressed. So again, I'm just doing the same thing for this one. We're only going to do one coat of the white because I was going for the more rustic look. Oh my gosh, look at that, you guys. Ugh, I love it. And then we're going to start on the blue one. The blue one's just gonna say hot cocoa. Again, just one coat. And I even pull these off when they are wet. Usually I don't do that, but since there's not much grasp onto the wood, it's easy to take off and I don't have to worry about it, you know, messing up. So now I'm going to angle these on to my fence post or fence picket, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to apply some wood glue on those. And then I am going to put like a bottle of paint on and let them dry. Now, after we're done, I'm going to explain this now with our, um, nail gun, you would take it outside. You can clear it with either clear matte spray paint if it's going to be indoors, or you want to put something like spar urethane or a weather guard on top of this. If you are planning on using this sign outdoors or selling it for outdoor use, that way it lasts and it holds up against the elements. So you guys have been asking, this is the um, nail gun that I use. You do need a battery for it. I will put this in the Amazon store link for you guys so you can check it out. And then 
I am just going to put three nails in each side. Make sure your nails are long enough so that they are going through both pieces of wood. And this is how it turned out. Sorry, I didn't have any words to really display it in all its glory, but I am totally digging these colors, the fonts, and I think this could look beautiful like in a pail, put some cement in there and put something on top of that and it could sit on, you know, a fire, buy a fireplace, well, maybe not buy a fireplace, it's wood. Okay, scratch that. Let's just keep this outside on the porch and look at that original color on the, ooh, I love it. You guys have been absolutely loving these wood DIYs and you do not know you do not know how happy that makes me. I think a lot of you guys know that I love wood projects. That, that tank. I love wood rounds. I love anything to do with wood. And to see how excited you guys are in the Facebook group, you guys, I asked what you guys wanted to see for Christmas. And so many of you guys said the scrap wood project. So it really makes my heart happy that I can continue to do these for you guys. And I hope it inspires you guys to look on Facebook for some free wood, or I gave you some other options in a previous video where you can look for free wood as well. So thank you guys for being supportive and I appreciate you all so very much. And you guys know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging this channel, if you're digging the DIYs, then make sure you like, subscribe, and make sure to comment. It is a way that YouTube knows that you're interacting with my video, you're enjoying it, and they're more likely to share it with other people. Also, check my links down in the description box, Facebook group, TikTok, Instagram, and my website. And with that said, let's go ahead and get back into the rest of these DIYs. Now, y'all in the Facebook group asked for snowmen. So this might seem redundant, but I wanted to show you another version of what you can do with it. So I am using one of the old pieces of flooring from um, my house and I am going to just put on this is actually more of that house paint so like a sample paint and it's called crisp linen if you guys do like the color by bear I think so I'm going to put one coat of this on I'm going to completely let it dry then I'm going to take my rough sanding block y'all this is like the best sanding block and it's from Dollar Tree look at that oh my gosh this de-stressed down beautifully like it looks like oh I just I love it I love wood I love wood all right and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna essentially do the same thing that we did with our two by fours we are just gonna do this um on a larger capacity in a larger capacity there we go yep who taught you how to spoke right um and then I'm gonna take that pumpkin by Waverly and I'm going to do like a little bit of, you know, funness on that nose, give it a little bit of character. And after that, I'm going to take a Dollar Tree scarf. I'm going to cut that down. Now, this was far too long. I was trying to keep the little tassels on there, but after I wrapped it around the neck, it was far too long. Now keep in mind, you guys, if you don't have wood, you could do this with a Dollar Tree sign very easily. You could do it with a regular piece of wood as well. So there are more options if you don't have obviously flooring just laying around. Then I cut the excess off and then again, I needed fringe on there. So I just cut some little strands into the, um, the scarf. Now to add some character because this little snowman is looking a little plain. I found these like rusted snowflakes at Hobby Lobby. I want to say they were like $2.99 and then all of the Christmas stuff was 50% off last week. So I wanted to add these as the buttons. I'm using my Star Bond glue to adhere these because we know how hot glue and metal works and they don't like each other and they're not best friends. So we are using the Star Bond glue so we make sure that these are not gonna fall off. I am going to put this out there that I do think this little snowman needs a beanie. I just wanted to show you like a different, like maybe you guys aren't into that and you guys like plain, simple, rustic. Here you go, here he is. This is rustic for you. I just think that his little head looks so plain that he needs a beanie. Or you could even do like a, dang it, a Santa's hat on this. Or yeah, like a regular size beanie would fit as well now doing a shameless uh 
plug in here. I just wanted to let you guys know that I do have a website now. I do one of a kind bleach flannels. A lot of the shirts that I do are just like one timers. So if you see it in your size, make sure you add it to the cart. And then I also am starting to sell my digital files. So um, a lot of the things that you see, you'll be able to purchase to use on your wood rounds or other signs as well. That link will be in the description box for you. All right, our last one. So I'm taking this piece of wood. It's about 11 and a quarter by 14. You guys, this was meant to be something totally different. So if you want to see that and learn a little something, then stick around after this DIY. So I'm taking crimson. I'm only going to do one coat of this when I am up. Oh gosh, I'm a mess. I'm just going to do one coat. We're going to let it dry. Then I'm going to take my decal again, or a mask 813 stencil vinyl. I will have this SVG available for purchase on my website as well. And I am going to put that on there. Then I'm just going to make sure it's straight. I didn't want a wonky looking happy holidays. So it is straight. We apply it on there. We're going to peel back that transfer ease vinyl or transfer tape. I'm sorry. And then we are going to be left with our reverse stencil. It's a reverse stencil, right? I don't know. Now I'm taking my white by Waverly and I am putting on a messy coat. You can see there is going to be a lot of red showing. We're only going to do one coat and you will see there is another layer that's going to go on top of this. So I wanted that those little open spots of red here and there. But if you don't like that, then just use a sponge roller and make it look super clean. Now I'm taking my ruler and I am going to measure down 3.75 inches. I wanted to create faux panels so it looked like I put three pieces of wood together to create this sign. Then I take my uh, Niffy, Niffy, oh, I need sleep, Nifty ruler, and I'm gonna take my lead pencil and draw lines. You guys have seen me do this before. This is the way I like to create faux like shiplap. And then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna rub it over that um, lead pencil to create some shadowing. Now we are gonna go to the weeding part. Now I left this in because I wanted to explain. If you are new to making wood signs, you need to make sure that you have a very sharp weeding tool. When I first started out making wood signs, I had a blunt weeding tool. So I would literally gouge my wood out, trying to get underneath the vinyl to lift it off from that paint. When you have a sharp weeding tool, you will not have that problem. I use the Cricut weeding tool, and then I will say that the Dollar Tree one, if you can find it, is pretty darn sharp. So I just thought I would share that little bit of information with you. Now we grab the DIY dark wax. You guys, I am gonna smother this on, okay? Not like literally smother it, but I am gonna cover the entire piece of wood. And I wanna let you guys know now, don't be afraid to try new things. Um, I get inspired by people all the time. And sometimes I don't think I'm capable of, you know, like creating what they do, but you just have to give it a try. I was watching the painted photographer and she was doing some signs. She works a lot with like IOD and DIY paint. And she was putting this DIY dark wax over a lot of her stuff. And it was coming out so beautifully that I was like, I want to try this. So as you can see, I covered it up. Now I'm taking a paper towel, wiping all that excess off and look at how gorgeous that is. Like I love the color that it made it. I love how dark it made that red and all of the like details, just like in the layering of the paint came out. I am obsessed. I love this sign. Look at that. I want to make this, like the paint that I did for this. I want to do it in a porch leaner. Oh, it's so cute. And right there I'm pointing out, this actually looks a lot lighter in this filming than it actually is in person. It's a lot darker in person. All right, you guys. So my boo-boo. So originally I wanted to do another paint inlay from IOD. And what I did was I wanted to try crackle. So I put the crackle medium 
down. Then I put my white chalk paint over that after it dried. Then I put my paint inlay on top of the wet paint and I let it dry. Well, one, I let it dry overnight, so I don't know if that was the issue because usually you should just let it dry for like two to three hours. And then there's the crackle medium. I don't know if that could have affected the paint and lay as well. So as you can see, I spritzed it with water because we're trying to reactivate that paint, okay? Because it's water sol soluble. And then as I start peeling back the inlay, I could already tell like, oh, like the letters aren't showing up, the tree didn't show up. So let me know if you guys have any ideas. Do you think it was the crackle medium or do you think it was the fact that I left the inlay over the dried paint for an entire night? Then I was like, I have to salvage this. Like, I don't want to waste it. I love the crackle and then I love the picture. So then I grabbed Elephant by Waverly. Could have sworn this was like a charcoal gray or maybe I just didn't mix it. But I tried going over the letters and I, I just couldn't. Like, nothing was working. I tried kind of like blending it out. I tried going over the tree with some green and you guys, it just... You live and you learn, right? So I just wanted to show you my hiccup. I tried it, it didn't work for me. Maybe I'll try it again using one at a time, like just doing the crackle instead of leaving overnight. Can I just say, I always think this black wall is a part of the camera like it's like but it's just the wall okay nugs is starting to play with stuff see her she's rolling over on her side and she's starting to grab she just turned four months i can't believe it's been that that long then you got that guy in the way and then we got that one and that one and baby stuff everywhere okay let's record this why can't i live this life Yeah, I know. You get to live here rent-free. You get fed every morning. Get to go out, do whatever you want. 